Well, hello! I didn't see you there. Nice sweater, by the way. If you're anything like me, you love old video games. My favorite game of all time is The Legend of Dragoon for PlayStation 1. I've spent, I don't know, maybe a thousand hours or so on that game alone, and that's not to mention the countless time that I've spent in Final Fantasy VII, Devil May Cry, and Pokemon, to name a few. I didn't go out much as a kid. Also, if you're anything like me, you probably like sharing them with others on sites like YouTube and Twitch. You can find both of my YouTube channels and my Twitch channel in the description below. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> to that end, in this video, I'm going to attempt a dual PC streaming and emulation setup where a Raspberry Pi 4 is the emulation PC or whatever model you happen to have, this will work for most of them, and your regular PC will handle the streaming. But Blaze, you may ask, why in the world would I want to do that? Well, first of all, it's just plain cool. Also, it's pretty simple and easy to do. B, this is a really good option for anybody that has a PC that can't necessarily handle emulating a game and streaming it at the same time. Like if you have older, lower spec hardware, uh, this is a really good way to make sure that you get the most quality possible out of your streaming setup while being able to stream these old games. Fourth, if you, like me, have one main PC that you keep all of your important stuff on and you don't want it to get riggedy wrecked by a virus when you put your ROMs for your old games on there because some of the sites can be sketchy, you're only out about 15 minutes to wipe your Raspberry Pi and put everything back on it as opposed to having to wipe your entire system and possibly losing all of your data. Not to mention emulating games brings a whole lot of advantages over dragging out your PlayStation and fiddling around with the AV cables and all of that crap when you're trying to play your old games. Discs are fallible, they do break and they wear over time. The frame rate and picture is oftentimes better because they didn't have the same picture quality back in the day. They run a lot smoother, they're a lot easier to stream, and it's just all around a better time. Plus, you get to keep your CDs mint so that nothing happens to them and they don't get all scratched up and unused and then you have to try to track down the same game later, which can be a real pain in the neck. Trust me on this, I've bought Final Fantasy VII and The Legend of Dragoon no less than four times a piece. I know what I'm talking about here. Now, I'll put links to all of the software that I'm using in the description below. But you'll need 7-Zip, Belena Etcher, RetroPie for whatever model Raspberry Pi that you have, OBS, all of your Pi equipment, you know, power cord, mini HDMI, etc., and a cheap capture card. It doesn't have to be a brand new Elgato H. 60 plus or whatever the kids are running nowadays I got this off of Amazon for 20 bucks and if you're only going to be emulating old games like uh, PlayStation 1 uh, Nintendo 64 Game Boy etc this will work absolutely fine now if you've made it this far I'm going to assume that you already have a keyboard and mouse or at least a keyboard because you will need that for one step in this process and if you play with a controller instead of playing with keyboard and mouse, I'm going to assume that you have one of those. Like this. See? Now meet me in the computer, and we're going to go over the software setup. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the RetroPie website. Once again, I'll have links for all of the software in the, in the description below. We're going to click here. You'll click whichever link corresponds with the Pi that you currently are using. I have the 3B Plus and the 4, but the 3B Plus is tied up on another project. So I'm going to click the 4 and let it download. And then it's going to do its thing and download. Now that it's done downloading, I'm going to show this in folder. You'll need to 
unzip this using 7-zip or whatever unzipping software that you like. Extract the files. <clears throat> I'm going to extract them here, so that's fine. And then once it does its thing, this is going to give you a .img file that you'll then be able to use Etcher to put on your SD card so that you can put it in your Raspberry Pi. Now we're going to use Belena Etcher. If I can get it to come up, there we go. Select image. Select our .img file. Select the correct device to put it on. And then click flash. This is going to flash the RetroPie image onto the SD card so that we can put it on our Raspberry Pi. Once this does its thing, we'll finally be ready to install the SD card and set up our Raspberry Pi. Sweet, we're in the computer now. We'll let it do its thing, and then it should boot into the RetroPie image. Now, like I said, you'll need a keyboard for one step in this. The rest of it, you'll use your controller. Now, it hasn't asked me to do this, but the first thing that it should ask you to do is to configure your input, which will be whatever controller you're using. Uh, I'm not going to do it here, but it's basically you just go through, you press whatever button that it tells you to, and then you've got your controller as an input and you can control the Pi with the controller. So after you set up your Wi-Fi, you theoretically never need to use a keyboard or mouse with this Pi again, so long as you're using RetroPie. Now, if you so choose, you can select RetroPie and go to the Raspberry config. Now, this is where you'll have things like your date, your time, uh, your country, etc. I'm not going to go through and set those up here because honestly, for my purposes, they don't matter. And I'm going to guess that for most people, they won't because not a whole lot of old games like that, say for some of the Pokemon games that I know of, really keep track of what the date or time of day or anything like that is. Now, here comes the step that you'll actually need a keyboard for. We're going to head down to Wi-Fi so that we can configure our Wi-Fi setup. Go to Wi-Fi, connect the Wi-Fi network. And then it's going to have our Wi-Fi networks here. We would select OK, and then we would enter in our credentials to connect to the Wi-Fi, and then we would have Wi-Fi on our RetroPie system. But it's very important. You'll need to write down or take a picture or whatever you got to do of your IP address of your Raspberry Pi. You'll need this so that you can transfer your ROMs to your Raspberry Pi over the Wi-Fi network later. But once you have that, you can just exit here and then you'll go to the systems, select quit and restart your emulation station. This will make your Wi-Fi settings and everything else take effect and then it'll reboot. Now I'm not going to tell you where to get your ROMs because I don't want to be held liable for anybody trying to emulate games that they don't physically own. But I will show you how to transfer the ROMs to your Raspberry Pi once you've acquired them on your own. In order to transfer our ROMs to the Raspberry Pi, we're gonna go in our address bar here. And we're gonna type in backslash, 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 our Raspberry Pi's IP address. Uh, in my case, it's 192.168.0.171. That'll bring us to the Raspberry Pi over network. Now open up another file explorer here, and then I would go into whatever, whatever thing I stored my ROMs in. I would then take these, select the ROMs folder. Uh, it's PSX and I would move these over to PSX. I've already done this, so it's asking me if I want to replace the files. I'm just gonna skip the files since that was purely for demonstration purposes. Now that you've done all that, whatever systems that you have the ROMs for should show up in your RetroPie splash screen in the UI, and you'll be able to play them once you select whichever game that you're gonna play. Now comes my very favorite part, well, I mean, you know, besides actually uh, playing the games and such, we're going to hook this bad boy up to OBS so that we can start streaming and sharing video and gaining that Twitch slash YouTube glory. 
In doing this, OBS is going to think that your Raspberry Pi is just another webcam, but that's completely fine. It'll only go at 30 FPS because that was a $20 capture card. But once you've done this, your system will now be able to see your emulated game as if it were the screen that you were using. Set it up. We're just going to create a new scene. Video capture device. I'm going to name this one RetroPie. Click OK. Simply select USB video so that it'll show what you have the capture card connected to instead of uh, like your webcam or what have you. Click OK and voila! It's really that simple. The last and very most important step is for you to now go live or start recording. Because that's what this is all about having fun, right? That's why we do things like this. If you want to see this in action, then you can click here or here, wherever the card shows up on the screen. And I'll have my secondary channel, this channel, and my Twitch channel linked in the description below. And I actually did play this on my Twitch channel and I cut up that video for YouTube to kind of demonstrate how this works and just how freaking cool it is. Shameless plug. Cough, cough. That's the end of this video. If you liked it, you know what to do. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any further cool content like this. If you disliked it, tell me why. Constructive criticism is always welcome. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment section below. And be sure to check the description if you want to see some of the cool things that I shamelessly plugged on this video. I hope that you all enjoyed this. I hope that this has inspired somebody to go out and do something like this that they wouldn't normally do. And I hope that you all like this video. And remember, when the gears start turning, anything is possible. Bye!